blood has washed us from all our sins and made us a kingdom of priests to his God and Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the late 1800s, there were two British explorers that excited the Western world with their travels to Africa. One of them was known for his exploration of the inner portion of the continent, but no one had heard from him in several years. So the New York Herald sent out a second explorer. His name was Sir Henry Stanley. And in 1871, in the town of Ujiji, Stanley finally located and greeted the first explorer with the infamous words, Dr. Livingstone, I presume. Dr. Livingstone, and if you look at his word name and you take it apart, it's Livingstone. You and I are members of the family of Livingstones for two reasons. First, we are being built up into a spiritual house. So secondly, we can be offering up spiritual sacrifices. Now anyone who has ever built a house knows that you don't just build it. After you have built it, there are constantly reminders that the house is in need of repair and constant upkeep of improvement. It's one of those things that it's not just built, it's always in the process of building. So too, you and I, as members of the family of living stones, are in the process of becoming. We are in the process of building as living stones. We are to be in the constant state of improvement. St. Peter reminds us that we are being built up into a spiritual house on the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. The significance of that cornerstone, however, is not its shape, but its position. In the construction of buildings at Jesus' time, the cornerstone completed or unified the project. Without the structure, without that stone, the structure or the building would be weak and ineffectual. Peter states that Jesus Christ is that cornerstone, and his significance to us as living stones is his position in our daily living and the importance we give him then within our congregation. For his position is one of great significance. His is the birth that brought shape to your life. His is the perfection that made you precious. His is the death that erases all your flaws in construction. His is the resurrection that empowers you to keep on building. And his is the promise that one day there is a room in the Father's house for you and me and all who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior from sin. Yet while we are here on earth, you and I are to be building spiritual house not by ourselves, but together. The bricklayer's ancient question is, does the mortar hold the bricks together, or does the mortar keep the bricks apart? Well, that all depends on what the mortar mix is. The mortar mix of a truly spiritual house is the love of the Lord Jesus Christ as revealed in the Holy Word of God, by which the living stones receive the power of God's Holy Spirit. This alone is the mortar that unites us into what St. Peter calls the Holy Priesthood. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. And later, in the same reading, St. Peter characterizes it this way, you are a chosen race. 
You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a people for his own possession. He paid for you. He shed his blood for you. You are completely bought. You are his possession. You are now a member of the family of living stones. So we are a family of living stones being built up always in the process of becoming that spiritual house and being made into this spiritual house for this reason, to be offering up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. There are several characteristics which define an organism as living. One is that it's growing, and the other is that it reproduces itself. You and I are living stones, and if we are living stones in this spiritual house, then you and I need to evaluate in what ways we are spiritually growing and in what ways we are reproducing what our Lord would have us reproduce. One opportunity that has been given to us by the Lord as we exist through this COVID-19 pandemic is time. Each of us have been given a little bit more time to evaluate our lives, our spiritual lives, and yes, our physical lives as well, and then to be able to make adjustments. Now, I do so look forward to the day when we, as the family of living stones here at St. Matthew, gather for worship once again in this wonderful sanctuary. However, just because we are presently unable to meet together does not mean that we are any less of the family of living stones. From time to time, people will ask me, Pastor, can I take a picture of the church? And I'll say, well, you can come in and take a picture of the sanctuary. But if you're going to take a picture of the church, you're going to have to come back either on Saturday evening or Sunday morning. That's where the church is, because the church is people. Now, for the past several weeks, this option of meeting together has not been available to us. And as many of my Facebook friends have posted, the church has left the building. But what an opportunity we have been given to evaluate and then to connect with others using our telephones, texting, email, and the Internet. But our spiritual sacrifices that we give, are they acceptable to God through Jesus Christ? Now, I'm not speaking here about salvation in itself, because all who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior from sin have been made acceptable to God through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But we are not made acceptable to God in order to be spiritual couch potatoes. We are made acceptable to him that we might be alive, living stones in a spiritual house, growing and reproducing and proclaiming the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. There is a tremendous joy when one grows spiritually. There is peace multiplied in the congregation when through the very word of God the members are strengthened in their faith and their walking in this life. And there is an impressive camaraderie when we join together for a common goal in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Still, there is even more joy realized when by the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I bring the light of salvation to someone who does not yet know Jesus Christ as the way and the truth and the life, so that they too can be in the eternal mansions one day. And that peace and that joy, not only felt among us, it is also felt by the holy hosts in heaven. Dr. Livingston, I presume. David Livingston received his medical degree from the University of Glasgow in Scotland. 
But most people don't know how and why Dr. Livingston went to Africa. Shortly after earning his medical degree, he joined the London Missionary Society, and it was the London Missionary Society who sent him to Africa. While he may be known as a great explorer, it was his vision to convert the Africans to Christianity that led Dr. Livingston on his infamous trip. As a member of the Holy Priesthood, he saw as his duty to proclaim the excellency of him who had called David Livingston out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. So may each of us, members of the Livingstone family, ever seek ways to be continually building up into this spiritual house, working together, knowing that we too have been called into a holy priesthood to be an offering, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mine in the love of Christ until the day you see your Lord face to face in heaven. Amen.